Okay, so in the second part of this, we are going to discuss the complexity of algorithms. As we discussed before, the major issue for us when we write a program with one simple loop, how long take that program to finish execution? Now, this is what we mean by time complexity. Then we will speak about something we do normally in computer science, which is basically the worst case scenario. We always estimate our program is to behave in the worst case, so we can improve it and it will behave very well in the best case and in the medium average cases. And then we'll speak about algorithms, paradigms, and we can understand more about the complexity. If you consider one algorithm and how efficient this algorithm are, is for solving a problem, then the input that you take for a particular size of data, how that algorithm is behaving when you have a large amount of data or a small amount of data. And the question we always ask or we like to ask are how much time does this algorithm use to solve a problem and how much computer memory and CPU cycle we are going to use to finish that execution. Describing the time complexity of the algorithm for finding the maximum element in a finite sequence. Now by finite sequence in, in, in discrete mathematics, we refer to a set of inputs, as simple as that. You can call or you recall an array every time you see this term. So here we have a procedure which is a function going and take an array from a1 to an and we want to find the max. What you notice here, we have a loop going from i equal to to n. Now the question you could ask yourself is, this loop is going n times. Why? Because it's going all the way from n equal zero to n equal the size of input. Now by conclusion, we could simply say, that this loop is behaving in big theta of n because this is how it will go all the way to n to finish and to find the maximum number. If you want to take another example, and in this example we want to find the time complexity for linear search algorithm. By linear search, we take an array and we test the first element. Is it the element I'm looking for? No. Is it the second, is the second element in the array the element I'm looking for? No. This means in sequential search, we have to inspect every single element, all the way from n equal 1 to n equal n size, or in capital, the input size. This means this algorithm is going to go all the way to big theta of n. Now, what if that array, we find the element nearly about the mid size of that array? where n is equal to n divided by 2. We find that element we are looking for at the first part. In this case, we give a rough estimation that the loop is not going to finish because every time we finish, we finish the loop every time we find the element. So once we find the element, this means that array is going to go all the way from n equals 1 to all the way n equals n divided by 2. But in fact, we will find, if we do the math, as you can see here in the equations, that array will or should be inspected in all, and that average time is going to reach all the way to n. But it is not the case if we are using binary search. We know binary search, we take an array, then we chop the array into two halves, and we go and inspect one of the halves based on the <laughs> location of the element that we are looking for. In this case, if you look to this code, you will find that this algorithm is behaving where all the way it goes log n. Because every time, and this you can keep it as a fact code that behave or use divide and conquer as algorithm strategy. By default, the time complexity for that problem is log n. That any code using divide and conquer to solve a specific problem, the time complexity for that code will be log n. N. Now to verify this, let us take a famous sorting algorithm called bubble sort. You know how bubble sort behaves. Now look to the code. This function 
for bubble sort and it works by comparing each element to its adjacent element if they are less or greater they swap now you will notice that there is two loops this means that the first loop go all the way from 1 to n minus 1 and the second loop is going from 1 all the way to n now multiply n by n minus 1 this leave you with 1 uh, half n to the power 2 ignore the constant and you will end up with the value n to the power 2 and that's why we say the time complexity for bubble sort it's a given n to the power 2 so every time you see two nested loop the time complexity is going to be n to the power 2 if you see three nested loop the time complexity is going to be n to the power 3 to understand that look to the time complexity of insertion sort now this is the code how insertion sort is behaving you will find there is a loop and there is a while loop inside the first loop now you look to those two nested loops and you will find insertion sort it should go all the way to n size in order to study and to inspect the element and while it's going the first iteration it will take the smallest element and insert it in the second loop this means that algorithm because we have two nested loop the time complexity is going to be big o of n to the power two